Let's talk today about uh, consciousness and choice, or being conscious and choice. They both go hand in hand, you see. We are considered a conscious man. That's what we are considered. Conscious man or woman, whatever you want to say. Or mankind, conscious. How did we get conscious? Well, through evolution we got conscious. And how did that evolution come about? Did it come about naturally or did it come about in a manipulative form, say, from uh, other beings manipulating our DNA? And, of course, I've talked about that at length, so I need not go into it now. But when man became conscious... That's when he had a choice. And before he became conscious in the evolutionary progression, before he became conscious, he was as like an animal. Animals uh, don't sit around and go, am I going to die tomorrow or am I going to live today or am I going to pay the bills or am I going to have a birth of a new uh, offspring or whatever. They, they don't sit around doing that. It just happens. That's one kind of evolution. In other words, you don't really have to make choice because you're living in the stream of nature, and nature makes the choices for you. But what happens when you evolve to a certain point to where you become conscious, where you have intellect, where you have a spirituality? Well, then you, take, you immediately come out of that realm of the other kind of evolution, which did all your thinking for you, but now you've gotten to a point to where you're conscious, and you have to make conscious decisions, and you have to make choices. And when I say you have to make, it's just, it's, it's a blessing and a curse. Because you might sit around and go, oh man, i got to make a choice. If I make this choice, it might be the wrong choice, or... What if I choose to do this, and how is that outcome going to be? And what am I going to do if this doesn't work out, and if I make this choice? And it goes on and on and on. So as soon as man become, became conscious, he ha had a, a form of anxiety built right in with it. Because when you're conscious and you're able to think and reason uh, then that puts the mind in motion, and the mind is almost like a monkey mind. It goes off on all kinds of tangents. So at some point, we were burdened and blessed with the fact that we have to think consciously. That means we have to make choices. Now, it also means that we can make certain choices, and this is this is the upside, is that we can make certain choices to uh, make our, our make a conscious evolution instead of like a unconscious evolution. Because before evolution, like I said, was all taken care of. But now that we can think, can we can we also reason that on the upside to that is uh, we take we take part in our own evolution, and it could be quicker could be instantaneous if you make the right decisions. Again, there's choice. You have a choice to be a Buddha or a choice not to be a Buddha. So when you come into this concept of like that man has to make choices, then that becomes a burden in a way. And and the first thing that, that the ego does or... Uh, that the ego that develops out of consciousness is, uh, well, I don't want to have to make a choice. I'd rather not make a choice. I don't want to. I don't want to have to think about it. I don't want to. I'll just. I don't want to make a choice. Choices become anxiety-ridden because you don't really know the outcome. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know. It's a crapshoot. It's a gamble. If you're coming from a certain level of consciousness, I won't even talk about the higher level of consciousness right now. 
I'm just going to talk about the normal level of consciousness that we are experiencing oh too well right now. So then you might ask yourself, well, <clears throat> why is the world in the situation it is today? Well, if you look around and you see a bunch of people that have not made a choice but would rather let other people make their choices for them, you're going to start getting into trouble there. When other people make choices for you, of course, you're free in a sense. Because uh, if you're in slavery or if you're in prison or if you're in a tyrannical government, say like communism or fascism or any overbearing type, type government, you feel, okay, and a lot of people feel, although they may not admit it, is that the reason that, that we get into these situations like tyranny and communism is because people don't want to make choices. They want pe other people to make their choices for them. So when they get into a system of slavery, do you have to make any choice? And that's basically where mankind is today. He's a slave, right? So do you have to make a choice or for the most part, does government and society and religion make your choices for you? That's what you have to ask yourself. Because when I see people running around wearing masks and psychologically dam damaging themselves, and very possibly, not very possibly, definitely uh, impairing their own health, just because somebody made a choice for them, we choose you to wear a mask. We choose you to be locked down. We choose you to be, oh, well, okay, I, you know, the, the, the person that is in this consciousness hasn't evolved to the point spiritually. See, that's the difference between the other evolution and the mental. When you get to the mental, the consciousness, then it becomes a, it becomes a revolution. It becomes... A revolution against being a slave, so to speak, and uh, or even being a slave to the other kind of evolution where you didn't think for yourself, you didn't have that conscious ability. So what happens is people want other people to make their choices for them. They feel more comfortable, and it's a deep psychological thing. They don't even know it's happening. People don't know this is happening. So they choose. It's easier. Let's put it that way. Once you be, uh, become accustomed to a certain habit, and that it, it be just becomes habitual, it's easier to make. We live in a society where we would rather have others make our choices for us. It's easier. We don't have to think about it. Yeah, they say we got to wear a mask, or they say we got to do this. Okay. I guess they know what's best for me. And so there you go. You're 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 making you're not making a choice. You're letting others make your, the, the choice for you. Because if you made the choice, then you would want to look into things before you made a choice. You would want to look into things and see if that was healthy for me or if that's good for me or if that that's something that I really want to do. Would it be psychologically damaging? for me or my kids or whatever. Then you come and make a decision on, the, on what you research. And I'm not telling people what decision to make. Not at all. You, Again, you are a, a, a victim of your own choices or a, an emperor of your own choices or a Buddha of your own choices. You, you, you decide that. Nobody else decides that. Nobody can make choices for you, not really. Even if they do make a choice for you, you chose to let them make a choice. So as much as you want to get out of choosing, you, cho you still chose something, didn't you? So that's just a little insight that I have today about <clears throat> where man is in, in, in relationship to where he thinks he is. 
<coughs> excuse me. Man is basically asleep. He's he's sleeping. He's uh, he hasn't got to see now. There's another. There's a spiritually enlightened way, and that way is called choiceless mentality or choiceless consciousness. Okay, but see, that's totally different. That's a whole different thing. In order to get to that level, you have to transcend the duality. You have to transcend what you may think to be good and evil or bad or good or any of those kind of things. You have to completely transcend that. But on the scale of, let's say, spiritual evolution in consciousness, mankind has not got to that point where he can even think for himself. That's the sad part of about it. That's why you see all these people in there buying into things that they shouldn't be buying into or having people make decisions for them that could be life-threatening for themselves and others. It could be life-threatening. Their belief systems, their, uh, their choices, or their non-choices, okay? And... When you choose not to, to uh, when you choose not to uh, make a choice and have others make, make make a choice for you, that you did choose something. You did at least choose one thing. And that's unconsciousness. So what we as a as a society and we as a nation and we as a group of beings on this earth who got here, who knows how and uh, where we're going, who knows where. All you can do is, is think about being self-aware. That's a good place to start, is with self-awareness. And that comes with meditation, that comes with contemplation, that comes with all of, all of those, contemplation, meditation, uh, focus, uh, concentration, and contemplation. This is just basically using the tools that the higher source has given us all. And when we reach that point of consciousness, that's the point when we can really excel. We can really, uh, we can really create a revolution in our. Uh, Consciousness or our, our spiritual evolution, it becomes a revolution. It becomes thinking outside the box, thinking, uh, making choices, uh, raising your consciousness. That's what that's all about. And so if you got a bunch of people out there that are lemmings and brain dead, so to speak, and you're walking around making choices and thinking consciously and... Uh, Striving for, let's say, a higher consciousness or a higher spirituality or a revolution, then it becomes very difficult. It becomes very difficult to uh, function in a society that is unenlightened when you may be enlightened. And there's degrees of enlightenment. There's degrees of enlightenment. And if you persist, it you know, the degrees first, you know, it's it's kind of hard, and then it gets a little less hard, and then you meditate more, and you, you concentrate more, and you, uh, you feel the energy within and without, and then all of a sudden, you start making uh, leaps, incrementally shorter than they were before. Before they were longer, but the more you, you get closer to that samadhi or uh, nirvana or whatever you want to call it, um, it becomes it becomes easier and easier because you're letting go of the old and embracing the new. And so, if I have advice to people right now, it would be to embrace the new, embrace the. Uh, Go forward, okay, go forward and 
keep your wits about you and try to get out of that habit of delegating all your choice authorities to other people. It's real simple. Wake up. Start breathing again. Start thinking again. See, that's another thing about masks. I mean, you know, you're not taking in any oxygen. And guess what? It's not just about oxygen. It's about prana, and it's about chi, and it's about universal life force energy that can't be seen but is encapsulated in every breath you take. So if you want to destroy yourself, if you want to make that choice, that's your choice. It's your choice. I personally don't make that choice. And uh, I hope that others at some point will come to some kind of realization that the choices other, that others make for them might not be the real choice, might be have consequences beyond your wildest expectations. Make your own choices. That way, if something happens, at least you know you did it and you're responsible. That's what I would say, and I'm going to keep this video short because I just, there was just a short intuition or brainstorm or channeling or opening up of the crown chakra. I could go on, I could go on and on and on right now, but I just want you to kind of focus in on what I'm saying about choice. Use your choice. Don't, don't consider it to be a burden. Your choice is your growth. It's your spirituality. It's your revolution into the evolution, spiritual evolution. Just think of what would be happening in this, this world right now if, if everybody was awake, if everybody was conscious. I mean, it's, it's pretty, pretty clear by what's going on all around us but people are lemmings and they're unconscious and they just uh, don't want to make choices, don't th want to take responsibility. And see, that's when the civilization will fall. That's when people will be put into abject slavery and tyranny. Because the ones doing this, they, they know the same thing I do about choice. They know the same thing that ascended masters and, and people on this earth know. And this is the time to really uh, check in, not to the dogma of spirituality, but to the consciousness of spirituality. That, that part of you that, that is self-actuated and uh, bec can become self-aware. And this goes way, way beyond just, oh, you know what? I'm not going to let anybody make any choices for me anymore because thunder said. Now, it goes way beyond that. It goes way, way beyond into the high, high spiritual realms. You, in fact, are your own Buddha, your own Savior. You don't need an outside Savior. You don't need a, any political figure or former or present. You don't need any of that. You're your own savior. You're your own Buddha. How? By, by your thinking. By how you think. And the choices you make. So I'll leave it there. And I'll hope that uh, with all goodness and love and uh, love from the heart that you people uh, understand what I'm saying. Thank you.